in case you missed it. This is a 2019 short film. I don't quite remember how I found this film, but I love the story and the powerful message behind it. This is by far one of my favorite short films, and it's not even a surprise that it won an Oscar. The movie starts off with a couple catching up at the end of a long day. They don't really give us names, so we'll call them Jack and Jill. They sit at the dining table as they both observe the new neighbors across the street making out. The neighbors have no names, so we'll call them Ben and Jerry. At first, it's just an innocent curiosity, but the emotions in their faces slowly start to change. They are initially judgmental about Ben and Jerry, but then they start judging each other. At one point, Jack makes a comment about Jerry's flexibility, followed by Jill making a comment about Ben's hotness. They both decide to turn up the lights so the neighbors don't see them peeping into their moment. Jill comes back one day from taking the kids to the zoo and grocery shopping to find Jack chilling at the dining table, having the jolliest time on the phone. To some extent, she's a little irritated by his level of chill. Jack gets off the call and Jill doesn't hesitate to express her frustrations. He tries to compensate by upplaying the fun she had with the kids in comparison to his work, but Jill's not having it. And at this point, she decided to choose violence and doubles down on the guilt trip. She brings up the fact that Jack is sitting in the dining room working instead of being in his home office, I suppose, insinuating that he might be working from the dining room to observe his new friends. So Jill continues going on about her frustrations, and you can never really tell if she's frustrated with her husband, how her life is turning out, or the neighbors across the street, because apparently it's been several months since the neighbor has kept this up. She drops a bag of apples, and when he tries to help her pick the apples up from rolling all over the kitchen floor. She gets even more upset. She goes on about how she has been juggling three kids and haven't had enough sleep while he's just sitting at home watching the neighbors pleasure themselves. The kids walk out on her ranting, but the husband walks them back into the room. Eventually, it's revealed that she is upset about the way Jack is captivated by the hot young couple across the street who seems to have no clothes and just hosts parties and have sex all day. They eventually de-escalate things and both agree that they are both missing their youth and drowning in kids and responsibilities. They hug it out as she takes one last peek out the window. As the movie progresses, Jill becomes super infatuated with this couple. She's constantly taking little peeks at them throughout the day, during breakfast, and the evening while she's breastfeeding her child. One night, Jill is unable to sleep, so she gets up to go to the balcony to get some fresh air, only to look across the street to find the ever so happy couple sitting at their dining table, not looking as festive as usual. It isn't quite clear yet what the issue is, but the curious neighbor just knows something's off. Jill doesn't mention this new development to Jack because she's still probably trying to keep it a secret from him that she's been keeping tabs on the neighbors. I'm not completely sure if Jill is genuinely sad for them or she's just too nosy to let it go. She's now cooking in the kitchen while Jack is sitting at the dining room table. She notices the neighbors look a little different. She nudges Jack to look across the street only to find that Ben had shaved his hair off. Today it seems that Jack has taken the kids out to play to give Jill a day off. She gets off the phone with Jack when she notices that Ben and Jerry had some company. She picked up the new binoculars that she'd gotten Jack for his birthday to get a glimpse of what was happening, only to find that Ben, with his head shaved bald, looking very sick while laid in bed, surrounded by loved ones. In all honesty, I'm super surprised that at no point did Ben and Jerry glance across the street to catch the neighbors peeking at them. Even in broad daylight, it's moments where Jerry almost glances across the street but not quite and honestly it tricked me a little bit and i wonder how much of this was super intentional during the production the evening comes around and jill had just finished taking a bubble bath and enjoying some peace and quiet without Jack and the kids she goes back to watch her favorite couple across the street and see something that shocks her to a core there are men in there who are similar from the morgue pushing a stretcher with a buddy bag on it jerry looked broken up and alone this shot jill so much that she runs downstairs to be sure of what she was seeing she was too invested at this point not to. Jill is actually about to make first contact, and I'm a little concerned for her because at any instance, if Jerry has ever caught her peeking at them, it might not go the way that she planned. But on the other hand, I'm a little irritated because should your nosy neighbors be this invested in your lives? Leave a comment below. What do you think? She walks up to the front of Jerry's building and watches as the men push the stretcher into the ambulance. They drive away, and Jerry is left standing on the sidewalk crying. Jill hesitates, but eventually walks up to Jerry and says, Are you okay? An interesting thing happens when Jerry is able to gather herself and actually look at who she was speaking to. She had a surprising look on her face as she asked, Do you live across the street? Jill considers life for a split second you can see it all over her face, but she reluctantly says, Yes. Jerry starts asking about her kids and the baby, and in the strangest plot twist of the movie, she feels like she might have been the creepy one who was engulfed in a neighbor's life. Turns out Jack and Jill forgot to close their curtains in the midst of all of this. Jill hugs Jerry in an attempt to console her from the tragedy she just experienced, and eventually goes back home to be with her family, who I believe she appreciates a lot more now. It seems when the fun had stopped and Ben had gotten really ill, they really took pleasure in just looking across the street and seeing the neighbors and their family and how they interacted with the kids. You can't help but have a grass is greener on the other side moment here, at least for me, that's what I got from it, because here's the neighbors who's been infatuated and obsessed with the youth and vibrancy of this hot young couple. On the other hand, the neighbors are admiring them the entire time, 